let's consider the case where we have a survey going out. Um, in this, in the next couple of units, we're going to be dealing a lot with data and an analysis of numbers and results. So for this survey here, what we've got is, do you subscribe to Netflix, yes or no, Hulu, yes or no? Suppose that we give out 150 of these surveys to people and ask them to check whatever boxes apply. After we collect all of them, uh, someone goes through and counts all of the Netflix yes answers. And they found that there were 115 people that answered yes, they subscribed to Netflix. When they looked at the Hulu box, someone went through and counted all the Hulu boxes. And in this case, there were 100 people that said yes, they subscribed to Hulu. Now, if we wanted to talk about percentages, Remember that percentages are part of a whole. And we can figure out percentages by looking at a fraction of what part applies divided by how many total possibilities there are. So in this case, if I wanted to find a percentage of Netflix users from my survey, There were 115 people that answered yes out of 150 total surveys. So I can calculate this percentage here, or this, this percentage by looking at this fraction. Remember, we can always calculate, or fractions can be uh, this decimal line, or this fraction bar line is equivalent to a divide symbol, and we can divide those on your calculator. In this case, if we do 115 divided by 150, we end up with 0.7667. Round it off. We can write this as a percentage by multiplying by 100 or moving the decimal two places to the right. In this case, we get 76.67% of my people that I surveyed are Netflix users. Similarly, we can do the same type of thing for Hulu users in our survey. In this case, we had 100 people that answered yes out of 150 people that were surveyed. If we divide that, we get 0.6667. And we can convert that decimal into a percentage by multiplying by 100, and we get 66.67% of my users, of my survey people are Hulu users. Now, if you notice, there's probably, there's going to have to be some overlap in this situation, right? We, if we just had, if everybody was a Netflix user or a Hulu user, we'd add up to more than 100% of our surveyed people. So there are definitely some people in this situation that are using both of these services. One picture way that you might be able to think about how this looks would be to draw a diagram like this. In this circle, I'm going to have all of my people that use Netflix. And in this circle, I'm going to have all of my people that use Hulu. I have some people here that are Netflix only users. I have some people here that are Hulu only users. And in this section in the middle here, I'll have people that are actually subscribers to both. Now, based on the information that I have so far, I can't really separate things out like this. So I need to deep dive a little bit more here. If I look at the uh, places where Netflix users checked yes, in these cases, there were 75 that checked yes to Hulu. The others did not check the Hulu box. So it was no to Hulu. So in this case, 75 minus, or 115 minus 75 gives me 40 people that said no to Hulu. So if I'm coming down here to my picture, there were, there's a total of 115 people in the Netflix circle. 75 are in the Netflix only, but not Hulu. Try again. 75 are in the crossover between Netflix and Hulu. 40 are only Netflix subscribers. Now, if I come here to the Hulu, description. If I broke that down, if I looked at all of the people that said yes to Hulu, there were 75 people that said yes to Netflix. And this should make sense, right? 
if the crossover of people that had both Netflix and Hulu was 75, that should show up in both of my breakdowns here. In this case, there were only 100 people that said yes to Hulu, so that leaves 25 people that said no to Netflix. And so that can end up in this box here. Now, if I look at how many people answered checked some box, there were 40 people that checked Netflix only, there were 75 people that checked Netflix and Hulu, and there were 25 people that checked only the Hulu box and no to Netflix. If I add this together, I get 140 surveys. Well, there were 150 surveys given out, which means that there were 10 that did not check either. They don't subscribe to Hulu or Netflix. They might use another streaming service. They might not use internet streaming at all. From a picture point of view, we can, we often put them in a box like this, and then we would put the 10 people that did not choose either of these to sit outside of that in my, in my um, picture. This example of a picture is a Venn diagram, and it's really kind of nice for situations like this that are small. We can very visually see that there's an overlap section of people that answered both. We can see how many answered each one, and we can figure out these percentages. In fact, now we could even answer what percentage of people answered both And looking at my picture, I can see that there were 75 out of the 150 people surveyed, or 0.5 or 50% of the people in the survey reported using both Netflix and Hulu. And so we get these this percentage. Um, in this chapter, we're going to be talking a little bit more about probability. A lot of times we'll see things written like this, as the probability... And then inside here, we're going to find out the probability of what we're looking for. So in this case, if I ask, what is the probability that our survey taker said yes to both? In this case, the probability is this reported percentage or the fraction that goes along with it. So in this case, there were 75 out of 150 people or 50% chance that if I picked a user, that user would be a subscriber to both Hulu and Netflix. So we can use these ideas of finding percentages and finding probabilities where we're finding, taking the part and dividing it by the whole number of options to figure out what the chance of that one thing happening, they're pretty much, they are the same mathematics. And so we can kind of have this real similar vocabulary as we're moving forward here. Now, having a picture like this works out very nicely if we only have two categories of things that we're looking at. If we have more categories than this, then uh, it's often going to be helpful for us to create something that's called a contingency table instead. And in fact, it works great for situations just like this as well. The way a contingency table works is you want to write all your options for one category out one direction and all your options for your other category out in the other way here. So in this case, I could have Netflix yes, and Netflix, no. And then I can have Hulu, yes, and Hulu, no, coming down the other direction. In this case, now every box represents a breakdown or an area of this Venn diagram or a breakdown of what my descriptions are up here. So in this case, the number of people that said yes to Hulu and to Netflix, there were 75 users that said that. Of the people that said yes to who, yes to Netflix, but no to Hulu, there were 40. Of the people that said no to Netflix and yes to Hulu, there were 25. And of people that said no to Hulu and no to Netflix, there were 10 of those that were left over, right? So. The crossover where both happen is in this category here. Yes and yes is 75. The no and no is everything that's outside. And then we have 40 in the Netflix only. And then we have 25 in the Hulu only, but not Netflix. This is an example of a contingency table. We have all of our variables out this way. 
When we create contingency tables, something that's very helpful for us to find here is our totals. So in this case, the total is found by adding across the rows or adding down the columns. In this case, 75 plus 25 gives us 100 total people that said yes to being Hulu subscribers. If we add across here, 40 plus 10 gives us 50 people that said no to being Hulu subscribers. I can also find my totals for each column. 75 plus 40 gives me a total of 115 people that said yes to Netflix. 25 plus 10 gives me 35 people that said no to Netflix. And if I add 100 plus 50, I get 150, that, which was my total number of surveys. A lot of times you'll hear this bottom corner here called the grand total because it shows the total number of surveys or people talked to. All right. Notice that we could also get this 150 by adding across the row here, 115 plus 35 gives me a total of 150. So this is an example of a contingency table and contingency tables are great when we want to try to calculate probabilities. So we'll go into this in a little bit more detail then in our next video.